Hi, this is Jimmy for The Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to teach you how to use Todoist for Android. Now, typically I use Todoist, and I know a lot of people who typically use Todoist more in the web client um, on their desktop or they're using the desktop client. But there's an Android client, it's pretty good, it works pretty much the same, but it has some differences, and we're going to cover those in this video. Now, before we get started, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really helps my channel out and it helps my channel to grow by showing YouTube that my content is good. So if you like it, please click the like button. If you want to learn more about these applications like Todoist, Notion, Evernote, and other apps, you really should be subscribed to my channel. My channel covers those in detail. I have playlists for each of those apps and I spend most of my time on this channel doing tutorials on how to do various things in these applications with the goal of helping you to get more done and to basically uh, be more productive in these apps. Lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. And before I get started on this video, if you are new to Todoist or if you're looking for a, like a refresher on how to do various things in Todoist, check out my beginner's guide to Todoist, which I'm going to link to up above. Now let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So as you can see here, I'm in my uh, Todoist client on my Android device. The Android device I'm actually using is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5e. It's a pretty good tablet uh, as a mid-sized tablet, not too big, not too small. Pretty powerful for the price that I paid for it. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out the specs and get more information as well as maybe even pick one up if you're interested in looking for an Android tablet. But this tutorial is not just covering, obviously, the client for Samsung's tab tablet. It'll work on any, any tablet or phone that supports Android. It has the Todoist client. Everything I'm going to teach you here will work the same. So let's take a look. Um, the inbox is sort of the default landing spot for Todoist is sort of the catch-all folder, if you want to think of it that way, or project for Todoist. It's sort of the default landing spot. To create a uh, new task in Todoist, you see that little red circle with the plus? You click that. That brings up the add a task um, option and the keyboard. So I'm going to say this one is go get groceries. I'm going to click that. I'm going to click the enter button or send button and I'm going to close my keyboard and you can see I have go get groceries task created. Mission accomplished, right? But it's pretty basic. Most, most of our to-dos that we create, most of our tasks that we create have things like due dates and other attributes to them. And we're going to show, walk through how to do each of those right now. So the way to edit your task is to just press on it. It brings up the edit, edit task um, options here. You can see that it shows me that this task is in the inbox. It has no date assigned, has no labels, no priority from left to right here to label the little label keys, a label. The next one, the flag is priority. The clock is uh, reminders, excuse me, in a lot in the, in the bubble quote is comments. And you can also add subtasks with a little subtask button on the bottom and on the right hand side is an ellipsis for additional options, mostly around deleting or moving or duplicating tasks. And we'll cover those in a second. So let's say we wanted to add a due date to this. So we can press the due date button there, the no date button, excuse me, and you have a couple of options here. You can create your own custom one up top and we're going to talk about that one a little later uh, after we so cover some of these easier ones. So underneath that we have today. A lot of times you come up with a task, I want to do this later today. You press the today button and it'll, it'll automatically assign it. So if we press today, as you can see, today is now assigned as an option at close out. And you can see my inbox now has a label as today. If you look on the left hand side of the left hand panel here, you'll actually see the today view. So if I press on that now, there's one entry in there and sure enough, go get groceries is there. If I go back to inbox, it's also there because it's assigned to the inbox, but it's due today. Think of today and upcoming as filters. 
because that's what they are. They're just filtering on everything that has a due date of today or everything that's beyond today for upcoming. So let's say I wanted to change it to tomorrow. So I press on it again. I press on today. I change it to tomorrow. And as you can see, now it changes to tomorrow. And I, when I click off, you notice that the today view now has zero tasks assigned to it. And if I click on it, there's nothing in there. Why? Because there's not, I changed the task from being due today till tomorrow. So as a result, I don't have anything that's due today. So it doesn't show up. But if I click on upcoming, as you can see, tomorrow, Wednesday, I now have go get groceries in there. I'm going to click back on inbox. I'm going to edit it one more time. I'm going to press on tomorrow. And let's say I wanted to set it out to a random date in the future. So let's say the 31st. I'm going to press the 31st. As you can see, you can tell it's selected by the fact that there's a red circle around the date. Now, if I were to just click off here, like I did for today and tomorrow, or even if I did it for next week or week or no date, if I click off here where I have selected a specific date, what's going to happen is it's not going to work. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you that. So when I press off here, you see, notice it still says tomorrow, not the 31st. The reason why is very simple is because I didn't hit the reschedule button. So whenever you sign a specific date that's not one of the predefined ones, it's going to, um, you have to hit the reschedule. So I'm going to hit the 31st. Right now it says 15th. I'm going to hit 31st. Now it says the 31st on our screen here. And now I'm going to press the reschedule button. And when I do that, now you see it says July 31st. So pretty cool, right? But what if I wanted to make this task um, do at a specific time? So what I can do is press that. And down here in it brings up the calendar dialog. And on the left lower left-hand corner, you'll see the add time button press that button and it brings up a very cool looking display of options here so by default the first thing that's selected is the the hour hand and you can see it was 1 through 12 is listed here so I was I want to make this do at 5 so if I press on 5 notice it shifts me to the minutes so and right now it's set at 21. If I wanted to set it for 0 for 5 o'clock at the top of the hour I can just press the double zero if I wanted to make it 505, I could press 05. If I wanted to make it well, of course, 05. And if I want to make it like somewhere in the middle, like maybe 9, I can bring it to 9 by just dragging my finger along that curve until I get to the right time. And then lastly, I can edit the PM and the AM by simply clicking on AM or PM. I hit OK. And again, this is not going to take unless I hit reschedule. So when you press reschedule and then you click off, you can see now my task has a July 31st at 5.09 p.m., which is a very odd, specific time to go get groceries, but hey, it works for me, right? So that's how you set up a time. You wanna go back in and take that out. You just press on it and you wanna say no date. You just press the no date option and it just wipes it all out. So that's how you set a time. Okay, so now, we have this open. What we can do is we can look at it and we have a couple of the things here. We have the labels. We have the prior, which is the, looks like a label. We have the priority, which looks like the flag. We have the reminder, which is the reward clock. And we have the comments, which are the bubble. And you can also add a subtask at the bottom. And over here on the right hand side, there is a vertical ellipses which gives you a couple different options. If I click on it, you can, it allows you to edit your task, it allows you to move your task to like different projects. Um, it also allows you to duplicate a task, copy a link to a task so you can access it. You can send a link to something else, click on it and it'll open up to do us to that task. You can hide your complete subtask. So a lot of times by default, it's gonna, when you click off a um, subtask, it can, depending on your setting, either keep that there or just remove it, uh, not remove it, but hide it so you don't see it. Uh, I typically leave that clicked when I'm working on it. And then activity lock shows you the history of that task. And lastly, delete task, which is in red, obviously, because it's destructive. So let's go back. So let's say I wanted to assign this a label. I can click the label button here. And I have a bunch of labels here. So go get groceries might be done in town as an example. So I can just check that one off and then press done. And now you can see underneath the no date, you can see a town option. 
and I can also click another one here. So let's say I didn't, I wanted to create a new um, label that I don't already have. So I'll just type new label, all one word as an example. And as you can see, when I type that in, when it doesn't, when to do is recognizes that that label doesn't exist, it will give you an option to add that label. So I'm gonna in a little like checkbox on the right hand side. So I'm gonna press that checkbox. And now I have that in there, press done. And now I have two labels on my uh, task. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a label? <laughs> a label is a tag. That's what to do is calls tags. And it's a piece of metadata that you can assign to a task or tasks that makes it easier to search and organize. So when you build filters, for example, that's really the main way you'll use them in, in Todoist is if you want to build a filter and you want to be able to parse your tasks in a certain way based on a certain attribute, the labels are the attributes for which you create the filter. And I'm going to show you how to create a filter later on in this video. So that's that. Now let's say I want to assign a priority. So one of the things I can do is press that little flag icon and it has four priorities, P1 through P4, a P1 being the highest priority, P4 being the lowest priority. And as you can see, as you may make sense, red is the sort of most urgent, yellow is, I can never say that's yellow or orange, but I'll say yellow. Yellow is P2, blue is P3, and then an empty flag is P4. So let's say, don't get groceries as a P2, so we'll just assign that. And now you can see, when you look at the icon here for the flag, it is my yellow now if i wanted to assign a reminder to this you have to have the premium plan fortunately i do have the premium plan so i'm gonna show you how to do it so you press the little alarm clock and you see it gives you a little date and time icon down here on how to do your reminder so i'm going to click that and then i can say i want this reminder to go today at because it understands natural language as, as you can see some of the examples like tomorrow at 10 or monday it understands natural language so today at if it's at 6 16 remind me at 6 p.m it actually if i type that in it act it actually shows me today at 6 p.m underneath you have to press that and that will create the reminder and now you can see in my reminders window here you can see at the top here I'm leaving, I'm supposed to do it at 6.16, but I get a reminder today, which is July 14th at 6 p.m. So 16 minutes before I have to go get groceries, it reminds me. This would be particularly helpful to me because it takes about 20 minutes to get to the grocery store. So I'd be four minutes late, but whatever, you get the idea, right? So that's how reminders work. So I'm gonna go back. Lastly, I can add a comment. So I can push the comment and then it has a little add comments with a flashing red bar there and then you just press on that bar it brings up the keyboard you say comments oh, actually you know what? i was trying something like stupid like don't forget milk okay i enter i close my window here i'll press the little send button to assign it and now you can see it there's a little comment down there that says don't forget milk i back out and um, as you can see in the icon here uh, it's actually a little one that indicates that there is a comment there that could be read so that's how you uh, work on a task now if i want to delete this task i can just go in press the triple i guess the, the vertical ellipses i can come down i can delete the task but let's say i want to duplicate this task so I can actually press the duplicate task button and now I see I have another task. Now, when I press on that task, a couple things. It keeps the, re it keeps the, it's smart. Todoist is very smart. So it understands that I probably want to keep the same priority, but given that I'm duplicating the same task, I probably don't want to do it at the same time as the original task. So it takes out the, the due date and it takes out the reminder and it takes out the comments. Which makes sense if you think about it, right? Because you're duplicating a task. You probably want to edit it slightly and maybe assign it to a different time. Uh, so maybe you want to use it as a template, but you don't want the exact, the things that are specific to the, the task, but rather are general to the task. And that's very smart implementation by Todoist. So I, I can come in here, and let's say I wanted to change this one's priority. 
I just press this. I just say I want to make this P1. I just press the P1 option, and now it's red. I can give it its own reminder by coming down here and saying Friday at 2 p.m. And now you can see after I hit that red button, it's now signed. So you, it's really sort of pretty easy to get things configured for tasks in here. I can also come in here, press it again, because no date. So let's say I wanted to do this uh, tomorrow. Now tomorrow is assigned. I press off, and there it is. If I go to upcoming, notice I only have I should only have one task. You say, well, you created two. Why do I only have one in the upcoming view? Well, if you remember, if I go back to my inbox, one of them doesn't have any due date. So it doesn't show up in the upcoming. Only things that have an assigned due date in the future show up in upcoming. So that's a pretty powerful, powerful uh, way of parsing your data. You might be saying, well, this feels kind of limiting. I only have two custom, two default views, excuse me. I can, well, three, I have my inbox. And then I have, like, in terms of views, I have two. I have today and I have upcoming. It's kind of limiting. We'll talk about how to create filters, create your own custom views in a little while. So. We talked about labels, we talked about priority, we talked about time. What about projects? What happens if you have multiple tasks that have something in common, right? Let's say you're building uh, a table and you might have a handful of tasks like get tools, get materials, clear out space, get some paint or some stain, a bunch of um, items that are common to that project. Well, you could create projects inside of uh, to do is very easily. So the way you do that, you can go to the project section. If I scroll down here on the left hand side, you'll see that this is a section called projects. And there's a drop down that shows me all my current projects. I don't have too many. And then there's a plus button to the to the right hand side of that carrot that that, that drop down option. I can either press it there, or if I already have it dropped open, I can press the add project. So I'm going to press the plus button because it's in add that project. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to say TFL project in the name. Come down here. You can assign like a little dot color to it. So I'm going to say orange, I like orange. And then you can click in here and scroll and see more options. There's a couple options here. One is the whether you want to create this project as a standalone project or as a sub project of an existing project. And what that means is if I were to click this no parent, if I were to click this no parent, I have fat fingers, you can see that these other projects come up. The welcome, I just lost it there. The welcome, the work, the blog, the YouTube, and the family personal. I'm going to click family personal. Now, it hasn't been assigned yet. None of this is created yet. If I back out right now, nothing will be there. So if I want to add a collaborator, I can press the collaborators button and I can invite people by from contacts or email. And what will happen is they'll get an email saying you've been invited to this project, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to hit back and I'm going to hit back. And so I'm going to skip the collaborators. And the other thing is this little thing called favorite. What you can do is if I click this, this is going to show up in the, towards the top of my left panel as a favorite project. Um, you know, what? let's click that. So I'm going to click that. You can tell it's clicked because it turns right with the black check mark. And then to save this, you click the little send mail icon, like the airplane, the paper airplane icon up here. I'm going to press that. And now you can see that under family personal on the left hand side is my sample project. If I scroll up higher, you see that over here underneath Family Personal, I have my sample project. If I go back down to that sample project and click on it and click on the ellipses and click Edit Project, if I come down here and click off Favorite and hit Resend because I have to save it, if I come back up here, notice under Family Personal, that's gone. It's no longer there because that's the idea is that you keep your most common projects in that because a lot of times you're working towards the top of the window and you want to access those quickly and you can move those around as well. So that's how you edit a project. 
if I wanted to change that project so it's it's a standalone project, I can actually drag it, just point pull push and hold and just drag it out, or push and hold to drag it in. I can also click it and drag it if I want to move it. So I want to put it like up here at the top of the list. I can just press hold and drag my finger and move that project around. So pretty customizable, pretty intuitive, pretty clean in terms of how you do that. The last thing I want to show you before I end this tutorial is how to use filters. Now, I'm going to give you a very general way of doing it on for Android, like just, just to show you enough to how you do it in Android. I have a much more detailed filters video for Todoist of how to use filters, how to create custom filters. I'm going to link that above. Uh, if you have any questions about how to create your own custom views and filters in Todoist, you should check that video out. I go through it all. So check it out. Uh, but I'm going to give you a quick demo here just for sake of completeness so you can see how you do it in the Android app. So if you scroll down under labels, you'll see a filter section and the little like raindrop drip or water drip up to the left of it there. Much like with projects, if I click the carrot, um, drop down, you'll see all the various filters I've created. As you can see, I have too much time on my hands and I create lots of filters to test things out to see if they work. Um, if I wanted to create a filter that, let's say, let's take, take a look at one of our, something that's in our inbox. So let's say I wanted to filter everything. Let's give this one a new label. And let's say we want to give it the label fuel. Okay. And then we're going to create a filter that shows us everything, only the tasks that have the label fuel on it, right? So as you can see now, I have two things in my inbox. One that is got just town and new label and one that has town, new label and fuel. So what should happen is this go get groceries one that's due tomorrow should be the only thing that uh, my filter picks up. So when you want to create a filter, you press the plus button next to filters and you want to name your filter. So we'll call this fuel, right? Because it's... And fuel, let's say we want to do, we'll do gray. And our query is the at symbol. If I could figure out how to generate that here. At back to fuel. And we'll make that a favorite so we can see it up top. Let's click the send button. And as you can see, when I do that, it creates it creates the filter and I only see the one thing. Now you may say, what the at, what does the at symbol do? Because I didn't explain that earlier. When you're adding uh, tasks, what the other way you can add a, a tag and what you can reference a tag is using the at symbol. So let's say I press this, this on it and I want to create a new tag or I want to add a tag, I can actually, just, instead of clicking the tag button, I can actually click the symbols, hit at, and it's, that'll bring up my existing, and let's say I want to add the maintenance tag, I'm going to click the maintenance there, and now you can see it's in there, and notice that it's in line, and it automatically shows up underneath as an additional tag, if I hit save, now it's there. So you could actually, and, then, and you reference the same language of the same language for creating projects, only you use a hashtag. So if I come back up here, I click on it, I hit space, and I press the hashtag, I find the hashtag first, hashtag, that brings up all my projects. And I can go to sample project as an example, I'll sign up to my sample project. And now you see next to the date that's due, there's a, it shows me the sample, the sample project, and press save. So if I wanted to, I could create a separate filter, call it sample, and we'll give this a color. We'll go olive green. Why not? We'll scroll down. And for our query, what we could do is go hashtag space, the space of sample project. And that's the name of our project. And then I'll make that a favorite as well. I'll hit that send. And notice it only shows me projects that have, that are yeah, you know, only shows me tasks that are assigned to the sample project. So pretty cool. You can you can combine them as well. So I'll do one more. So let's say I wanted to have a filter, and I wanted to call it fuel and sample. 
where I only want items that are, and I'll change the color here to yellow. And let's say I only want projects that are both have the fuel tag and are in the sample project. So first remember the symbol that we use to reference a tag is the at symbol and I type fuel. I put a space and it uses the and or methodology. So if I do and, if I come to control, if I come to symbols, excuse me, I look for the ampersand, which I'm not seeing. Boop, space, and go again and type hashtag, and I type sample project. And then hit send. It will show me to have both. Now, the way I tested that works is I'm going to go back up to my tasks. So I'm going to go to uh, upcoming. I'm going to press on this task. And I'm going to take this tag. And I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn off the fuel one. Hit done. And I'm going to back out. So now fuel is no longer on there. So let's look at some of our filters. So it, if I go to sample, you see it's still there. If I go to fuel, it's not there. And if I go all the way down here, because I don't think I made a favorite, fuel and sample, it isn't there. Because it has the fuel, or so it has the sample um, project, it's assigned to the sample project, but it doesn't have the fuel tag. The and means both, but it does show up in sample, doesn't show up in fuel. But if I come in here, then I decide, you know what, I'm going to add the fuel one in back in. And hit done. It's still in my sample one, but if I go to fuel, now it shows up in fuel, and now it also shows up in fuel and sample project. So that's how filters work at a high level. I recommend, again, you check out my video on filters to get a more in-depth um, idea of how they work. And that's pretty much everything I have to show you. So thank you for tuning into my tutorial. Again, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really does help me out. I really would appreciate it. If you um, want to see more of my tutorials, please click the subscribe button so you can hit subscribe and it'll show up when you log into YouTube as an option to watch. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.